Welcome to Community of Grace, this beautiful Palm Sunday. A little chilly out there, but uh, we want you to wave your palms as much as you want today. And uh, so, yes, there we go. Welcome to Community of Grace. Please stand if you're able and join us in our opening song. You're going to have to keep, like Brooke said, you got to keep using these. Presbyterians are called the frozen chosen, and it's hard to get you all to say amen. So all, if you want to just say amen, just do one of these. We'll start with this one. We'll, we'll practice. We'll practice. If you really like it that you can see some smiling faces out from under masks, say amen. amen. Yeah, there you go. Um, if you still want to pray that we can stay safe together and keep that pandemic away, say amen. My palm was already broken. I waved it so hard. <laughs> if you love having children in church, say amen. amen. If you want to volunteer to watch in the nursery and sign up to teach children's church, say amen. amen. If you think Hanson's manipulative sometimes, you yeah, no, 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 no. <laughs> Are you ready for a joyful uh, Palm Sunday? Yeah. All right, let's have some joyful music from Tom. morning. Please stand if you're able and join me in the call to worship. It is holy to gather and pray. It is holy to sing and rejoice. It is holy to be at rest and to prepare the way for love. It is holy to celebrate justice whenever we sense its opening. It is holy to shout, Hosanna, God help us. It is holy to remember when God has shown up in our lives. It is holy to gather and sing. Here now, let us do all those things. Well, you just get to stay standing and just wave those palms. <laughs> if you don't know what to do, wave your palm. Make sure good. Please join us in singing Prepare the Way.
The scripture today is from Luke chapter 19, verses 29 through 40. I invite you to open your hands to receive God's message through our reading and praying. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, like Nicodemus, we come to the word with many questions. Like the Pharisees, we can be captivated by correctness and intent on right answers. As we turn to your word, Spirit of God, do not let our desire for information dominate our need for transformation. Let us hear the word and be moved to greater faith and obedience. Amen. When Jesus had come near the Jerusalem suburbs, Bethphage and Bethany, at the place called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of the disciples, saying, Go into the village ahead of you. As you enter, you will find tied there a young donkey that has never been ridden. In the prophet Zechariah, the Messiah would, would arrive on a tumble donkey rather than a war horse. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, why are you untying this colt? Just say to them, the Lord needs it. So they went and found it, just as Jesus had told them. As they were untying it, its owners did ask them, why are you untying this colt? And they did say, the Lord needs it. They brought it to Jesus, and after throwing their cloaks on the colt's back, they set Jesus on it. As he rode along, people kept spreading their cloaks on the road. In 2 Kings, when Jehu was anointed as king, the people spread out their cloaks. When Jesus reached the path that goes down from the Mount of Olives to Jerusalem's gate, his many followers began to praise God joyfully with a loud voice for all the deeds of power that they had seen. They sang, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest heaven. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to him, Teacher, order your disciples to stop that. He answered, I tell you, if, I, if they were to keep quiet, then even the stones would shout out. The word of God. Thanks be to God.
note. <laughs> All right, young folks, come on forward. on your pants with well, pineapples it's kind of close i think uh, james has got palms on it floyd's got palms on his shirt some of you prepared very well that's good that's good uh, there was a day when the whole city was so excited about jesus there was a day that they were so excited they didn't know what to do some people took their hats and they just waved them around and threw them some people sang songs together. Some people told stories. Story. Old people know that when you say the same story all over and over and over, that's a way to get connected, right, old people? And these people were so excited. They told, so, told the same old stories. They were laughing. They were crying. They were. If a visitor showed up, they'd say, these people are bonkers. What's going on? And they would say, well, Jesus is here. We had asked for help. We had begged God for help, and God showed up. It was a party. It was a parade. It was a celebration. It was a ball. It was a fete. It was a gala. It was a whole thesaurus full of fun words. Now, when we celebrate Jesus' birthday, what holiday is that? Christmas. And where was Jesus born? Bethlehem. Nailed it. Yeah, it's one of those, one of those suburbs, really close to the words that Miss Jane said, Bethany and Bethphage. Uh, is it December 25th today? No, it's not. Okay. So uh, Christmas is celebrating when Jesus first came close to Jerusalem. And Palm Sunday today is when we celebrate the last time that Jesus would visit. And his week started off so exciting on Sunday. But on Monday, he was kind of mad. He was kind of mad at people. And on Thursday, he was kind of scared. And on Friday, he was sad. And on Saturday, his friends were really, really sad. When you're excited, do you like to share that with other people? Yeah, yeah, sometimes, yeah. When you're scared, do you want to just be alone in the dark, or do you want to be with someone who makes you feel safe? Yeah, safe, yeah, yeah, yeah. When you're sad, sometimes it is great to be all alone and just be sad by yourself, and other times it is so good to be sad with somebody. Now, when, um, when Jesus and his friends on this week, they had all those different emotions, and they did a lot of that together. We want to be those kind of friends for other people, just like Jesus and Jesus' friends. God is with us no matter how we feel, no matter how excited, sad, angry. And so especially on this important week, let's cheer on other folks who need help. Let's pray together. Dear God, thank you for being with us. When we feel happy or angry, scared or sad, amen. All right, you can bring those palms back with your family. Now, if, how many of you went up to the Capitol to see the cherry blossoms? One, one, one winner right there. Okay. Yeah. They were just right, weren't they? Just, just, just right. If you're the kind of person who was excited as Kathy was about that, or you saw the sun, the sun was peeking through the canyons on this one little knob over there this morning. I don't think it was there for more than 30 seconds, but it was incredible on the drive here. If you're the type of person who sometime this week said, ah, oh, that's beautiful. Wave those palms. If sometime this week you said to God, either in sighs or screams or speech or whatever, if you said, God, thank you for this person I love, thank you for this opportunity I have, thank you for these experiences, thank you for everything, then wave those palms. Online, I'll bet there's a palm emoji out there somewhere. I don't know where it is, but you can start throwing that all over Facebook if you want. If sometime this week you had a note of desperation, about the world, about the way your life goes. And you said, why does it have to be this way? Wave those palms. Mm. If ever this week you felt so heavy, so burdened, so overwhelmed that you couldn't even say a word about it, just hold those palms softly in your hand. If you saw a glimmer of hope through all of that, just anything that contradicts that march of chaos and cruelty in the world, if you saw that glimmer of hope, wave those palms. 
And if you came here this morning knowing that you don't have it all figured out, but you want some help to take those next steps toward love, then wave the palms and say, Hosanna. Yep. Okay, I wasn't there in the story that Jane read. I wasn't there, and even if I had been there, I wouldn't have been able to get into everyone's head and their heart. But I think, I think that when Jesus walked toward the Jerusalem gate, past those little suburbs, down the hill, t from the olive grove, into this valley that we, we, we did the measurements. It's a little bit bigger than the biggest part of Dimpledale, but, you know, when you're driving over Dimpledale, like, look at that, add a few more, you know, like another 100 feet, and that's what you got. As he rode that donkey past uh, crowds, the crowds might not have been any bigger than us, right here, right now. It might have been this big, right here. They were coming for a religious experience. Some of them were just, you know, having this looking for a religious experience that's otherwise crowded out of their regular lives. I think right then, those people who were waving palms were caught up in all sorts of emotions. They had all kinds of different longings. Some of them had spiritual longings, quote, spiritual longings. Others were just worried about money, worried about relationships, worried about loss and loneliness, health, their own bitterness, all kinds of worries. All those things could be called spiritual, but we tend to compartmentalize one thing or another, blessings and fears, and I think they did the same thing. And I think those people were waving for all kinds of reasons like that. And some were just waving because they got caught up with contagious spirit in the air. But if you want to boil it down, this is my conjecture. This is my sanctified imagination. That's what preachers say when we're just guessing. Sanctified imagination. If you want to dig into the reasons behind the reasons, why anyone does anything, I think people were waving palms that day partly because they got caught up in this idea that Jesus, this, this guy, this, just this guy, he could do something about all those feelings they had. They got excited because they got a sense that he knew a better way to deal with a whole list of those complicated feelings that people had. They could just feel it. They could sense it. And you know what it's like when someone in your life is a good listener. They don't have to say anything to be a good listener. You know what it's like when someone just has a compassionate heart. It's just the way they smile. They don't have to say anything. You just feel safe around them. I think some people just had that feeling around Jesus, so they waved palms. They got excited. Somehow, whatever issues they had, he pointed to hope, celebration. He pointed to a way through when there didn't seem to be another way through. They waved their palms, I think, because some people felt lost until he showed up. And all of a sudden, there was a path, there was a light leading the way in their life. Does that make sense to you? Mm -hmm. in, in church, when some people who have have found a way in a life when they didn't see that there was a way through it. When they come in, uh, that could be contagious. When some people are survivors in a place like this, and someone else walks in trying to survive, and they can see you waving just in your body, in your spirit. They can see you waving your, your way through. That excitement in the air. The spirit can grow in a place like that. And once in a while, it just gets out of control. And that's what Palm Sunday was. And maybe that's what Palm Sunday is. Somewhere on that path, walking down a little bit bigger than Dimpledale, back on that first Palm Sunday, someone in the crowd, same size as y'all, had been so broken and so overwhelmed, what were they even doing walking to Jerusalem? What was the point? Every time I go to church, someone asks me for money, or, or Tim is handing out an envelope about money, or... Every time I go to church, they make me pray some empty words I don't even understand. But somehow that person, there was a person in the, in, the, in the audience that day that felt that. And we know the day. We know the place. You can zoom into it on Google Earth. We can put it on a calendar. It was March 29th in 33 CE. One person in that crowd was caught up in this maelstrom of feelings of, does it even matter? Does my life even matter? And in that, they got captivated by this guy, Jesus. And they didn't, is he God? Is he just this carpenter's son? Is it Jesus in God? Is, is it the Messiah? Is it, how is it God and God's son at the same? None of it made any sense. But maybe he just loves better. He just feels better. Just being around him. His presence, in his presence, life seems better. Life seems more abundant. 
In his presence, I don't feel as stuck as I feel when I'm alone. In his presence, healing at least seems possible. In his presence, I I might not get all the way to believing this, but it starts to make sense that God might care and that God might help and that God might even save me. That's Hosanna. To me, those little three things there, those are layers of what's going on on, in these palms on this Sunday. But we're not going to stop there. We're going to hold on to that. Three layers. It's like a cake. A layer of excitement, a layer of support, and a layer of new life, of salvation. Now we're going to add some icing. If you like cake, it's the best part, the icing, right? Best part's the icing. The Hebrew people, the very ones who were feeling the same things that you feel about life and love and loss and loneliness, they also had to deal with a very oppressive Roman government. Even when things were good, and when are things really ever good in that case, even, even then, there was so much just aggression in the air. Even when they got a good governor, people were still just nasty to each other. And there was a police brutality, and there was a this and a that. People were taken advantage of. Those people were oppressed. Those people were just ignored. And how could you say that there was love in the air in there? How could you trust anyone of your neighbors? You work so hard, but you can never catch a break. The system is just broken. And for them, it had been that way under the Romans. Before that, it had been that way under the Greeks. Before that, it had been that way under the Persians. Before that, it had been that way under the Babylonians. Before that, it had been that way under the Assyrians. And frankly, when they were in charge of their own lives, it wasn't that much better. They were just sick of the corruption and the propaganda and the control. Does this sound familiar? Anybody? So on top of all that, remember, cake, 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 icing. On top of everything in my life, if we could just start over and put things right from the beginning, what a dream. If we could just start over and and maybe listen closer to what God wanted us to do and walk in the light, can you imagine what it would be like if we could just start fresh? And of course, none of us really. I mean, we can, we can talk about it. It's great to talk around a campfire, what we could do if we start all over. But we don't know how to do that. And even if we had a hint, it seems like every time we try to walk in that direction of a fresh start, something gets in our way. Sometimes it's something resists out there, some obstinate power in the way. Sometimes it's our own sense of comfort, familiarity, self-sabotage. But to that dream, that kind of hyper-optimistic, revolutionary dream, that desperation cry, God, isn't there a better way for all of this? To that feeling, they wave palms. And if you've ever looked at that whole array of pain and dysfunction, so frustrated about how hard it is to fix anything when the things seem so easy to fix, if you ever feel like that, wave your palms. Okay, if that's the icing on the cake, what's the best part of the icing? It's that little rose, you know, on your birthday cake. It's just nothing but sugar. That's the great part. Okay, so here's the rose, okay? So we got cake, 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 icing, rose. In Utah, I have learned that beehives are a symbol of an industrious spirit. Beehives mean hard work, not just today, but beehives tend to mean, I think, hard work, this pioneer attitude that formed the place. Is, is that the sense? Is that what, is, am I getting the right idea there? Okay. So beehives, that's our symbol. In America, I have no idea why this is, but the eagle stands for who we are and where we come from. I don't see the connection, but somehow that's our mascot, and it means something special to special people. They love the eagle, all right? Okay. Republicans have an elephant. Democrats have a donkey. Canadians have a maple leaf. And for the cultural memory of the united Israel, 12 tribes, one nation, one God, one people, for them, what do you think was the symbol for it was better back then and it could be better again? Palms. Palms was their, that was their maple leaf. That was their beehive, okay? So imagine in America, if, um, if a presidential candidate made a commercial, we, we started this exercise in Bible study. We said, what would your commercial be? This is my commercial. The presidential candidate comes and cuts down a cherry tree and then says, I'm always going to tell you the truth. Who would, what would that remind you of? George Washington. Yeah, I cannot tell a lie. Right? But now imagine the same commercial. The candidate planted a cherry tree even more redemptive, forward thinking, taking from the past, moving to the forward. We're not only going to tell the truth like our heroes and our ancestors, but we will heal. We will grow. That's inspiration. Or imagine you're at a rally. We're doing something in Sandy. We want to come and start something in Sandy. And a speaker says, I have a plan to destroy our enemies. And the people wearing t-shirts with eagles, they start to cheer. 
And then the next speaker says, I have a dream that we can live in peace together. And does that have your attention? Peace together? Maybe they tell you about their dream and you're encouraged to take part. Maybe you get caught up in the moment and all of you with NPR handbags start waving those in the air. <laughs> Finally, in this messed up society, finally someone has a vision for a better future. Finally, someone has a spirit that resonates with my hopes and dreams. And that makes me proud to be part of all that. That's the spirit that was in the air on Palm Sunday with palms as their symbol. And waving those palms while Jesus processed on this symbolic donkey, it was playing out a very specific Jewish drama. It was their way of saying, enough. We've had enough brokenness. We've had more than enough pain. We want a revolution. We want our hope back. We are tired of charlatans having control, and we want to shine a light on a good future. Amen to that? to which the leaders of the status quo said, whoa, 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 whoa. This is getting out of hand. Too much change. We got to stop that. So they drummed up some misinformation. Yeah, we've, we're used to that. They took advantage of these passionate motivations around anger and identity and relative power. We, we know that one. We know that move. They brought it to the Roman leaders who, you know, Jesus does kind of seem like a problem. So right there, which is a reasonable political response to the fear of change, right? Resistance. Even some of the people who waved palms, just, just like you, even some of them, I'm, I'm pretty sure some of the disciples got caught up thinking that the revolution was just a revolution, just a rose, not the icing, not the cake. And even some of them got fixated on this idea, and they started cutting off ears, and they started selling out their friends, and they started questioning their allegiances, and they went back to their old, boring lives, and they wondered if the last three years had mattered at all. But Jesus knew. His message was already out there. He didn't have to tell him another time. It was as clear as it needed to be. His spirit was alive and working on its own. He knew that the heart desires a contagious grace. So he didn't pay attention to the comments and the criticism. On this day, he didn't need to argue. He just sat there and smiled at all the people waving for so many different reasons. And he trusted us to take it from there. He invited us to partner with God and to recognize our calling and to seek our hope and to express our joy and to change the world. He told us that if we're silent about any of these things, what happens, Jane, if we're silent? The stones cry out. If we try to tamp down this need to breathe deeply, then even the stones will shout to remind us, because the world keeps moving toward contagious love. Amen.
on Christmas there are three gifts, gold, frankincense, and? Okay, how many wise men were there? We, we don't know. It's not in the Bible. There's three gifts, but it might have been six, might have been one. Who knows? There was a play in France, I think it's the 18th century, and there were only three actors. And they're like, well, there's three gifts. This is easy. So they made three wise men. And you think there's three. Now, we just had children singing in that song, right? Uh, there's no children in the, in the story you read. The main, if you're reading your bulletin, if you're looking in the bulletin and learning from the side notes, the reason that we sing about children on Palm Sunday is that there was a guy stuck in prison, and there was a children's choir that would sing. Imagine some choir director in 821, that's that long ago, 1,201 years ago, some choir director was wrangling a bunch of kids and sang a song, and some poor sap stuck in prison heard it, and their spirit was enlightened, and you sing it today. It's a lot of ways that we can shape the world with a little bit of effort. One way you can shape the world with a little bit of effort in this church is to come to the technology review after service. If you are the kind of person who's not scared of buttons and computers, and if you're the kind of person who likes that our church live streams, that we have a group of people out in the world who connect with us through that way, many of them who are starting to come back now, but there's still a lot of them out there. If you want a live stream in this, go and learn everything you can from Brian and Emily, and we can continue that ministry after service. That'll, they'll just be gathering back there and pressing buttons. Tuesday, the deacons meet to take care of the people in this church. Thursday is Monday, Monday, Thursday worship right here. We're going to have a whole bunch of music from a couple different churches. We're going to have a whole bunch of churches from all over Salt Lake. The next day, Friday, there's a procession uptown, and then there's a candlelight worship uptown. Saturday, we got baskets and eggs. I don't know why Easter has eggs, but it makes sense, I guess, to some people, and there's going to be candy in those eggs. Does that sound exciting, Marshall? Some candy and some eggs this is good. Don't eat too many. Get your dentist appointment, but be here on Saturday. Sunday, it's fancy hats. I think Deborah has a fancy hat somewhere. I'll bet a dollar that Judy has a fancy Easter hat. Uh, I can see Kathy wearing like a, like a Kentucky Derby hat that she's probably going to pull out. <laughs> So if you've got a good big hat, we are on Easter. Monday, I take a nap because of all those things. And then, um, <laughs> and then the next Sunday, what are we doing, Janae? Oh, my gosh. We're adding to the fun. There's just a lot more coming up. But um, I'm just today, and then tomorrow, and then Wednesday, and then Yeah, so lots of things inside and outside. Um, she she s says thank you for your support. If this church has ever been a place of support, if you think it can be for this community, you're invited to make a financial offering. And this week is one of the weeks that the Presbyterian Church has a special offering opportunity in those envelopes in your bulletin or that may have fallen out on the floor somewhere. Um, every year at Palm Sunday, there's about 10,000 churches in our group that get together and they're invited to make an offering so that when a hurricane hits, we can send a support group. When some of our partners in an orphanage in somewhere else in the world has a drought, we can send food over there. If you want to contribute to that in the special envelope, you go ahead and do that. We're going to take our uh, offering and listen to our offertory.
Let's pray for those folks who are on our heart. God of the ashes, thank you for your attention to and remembrance of the brokenhearted. Just as you sent the prophet Isaiah to proclaim good news and sent Jesus to be the good news for the world, would you let voices rise in our communities to speak comfort, provision, freedom, and resurrection for our most vulnerable? Let all those who feel abandoned and imprisoned by the people, messages, and systems of the world, may they receive their crowns, knowing that you are a God who is always seeing great potential in the dust. Spin these ashes into gold. We pray especially for the names on our hearts this morning. We pray for broken hearts and bitter hearts to soften in your time. We pray for people battling loneliness and for those who are seeing hints of new life to keep moving. We pray for those who have lost loved ones that they remember with cleaner tears. And all this we pray together and with all creation through the words that you taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And do not let us fall into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you. And we share that with everyone who's watching online. Lord, make us more holy.